completely dry eye. And uh, what is the pathogenesis? What is the uh, uh, environmental factor? Yeah, viral infections uh, may be the environmental factor or the trigger because they cause uh, local cell death and release of tissue cell antigen and then uh, we will have the autoreactive T cells and B cells. Uh, in morphological evaluation of the tissue, we have, as you see in this picture, what do we have here? Here we see the... Pointer. Pointer. What do you see in this picture? Enlargement of the cell. Sorry about that. And what do you see here? What are the lymphocytic yeah, infiltration? And here you see that this dot has a terial hyperplasia. You cannot find the tumor name here. And many times uh, we use lead biopsy for uh, detection of uh, changes of Sjogren's syndrome. And in lead biopsy, for example, in this biopsy, we can see lymphocytic infiltration, we can see atrophy of glands which are seen in Sjogren's syndrome. Okay. The next autoimmune disorder is systemic sclerosis or scleroderma. What is the main thing we see in this um, disorder? Systemic sclerosis. The connective tissue will become. Yeah, fibrosis or the position of connective tissue in different parts of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we have. Excessive fibrosis in multiple tissues of iterative vascular disease, and we have some evidence of autoimmunity. Although we are, not, uh, you know, we do not know what the trigger is. Uh, sometimes this disease is limited to the skin and is called localized scleroderma. Uh, there are two types: diffuse systemic sclerosis and limited. Systemic sclerosis. Okay, so we have uh, we have systemic or cutaneous. Okay, cutaneous form is uh, limited to the skin. Systemic has two forms: diffuse types, limited types. Diffuse type uh, shows uh, virus skin involvement. It has rapid progression, early cell involvement, and the prognosis is poor. But limited uh, systemic sclerosis, for example, if the skin involvement is small, it is confined to the fingers, to the face, and involvement of the viscera, it is late in the disease, and it has a benign. Okay, so diffuse form, good prognosis, limited form, a benign form. And the limited form is also called crest syndrome. Crest syndrome. What does it have? C R E S T. C for calcinosis. R for Reynolds phenomenon. Uh, e for esophageal dysfunction. S for scleroderma. And T for telangiectasis. For example, what is telangiectasis? Ataxia, telangiectasis. Yeah, of vessels which can be seen, for example, clinically, uh, red markers. And uh, what do we see in this picture here? Color of. No, the position? It's very not phenomenal. In, you know, in reaction to cold or a stress, mm -hmm. uh, the fingers become pale. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a scleroduction. Mm -hmm. 
know, it causes the formation of the uh, Finger. fingers. It causes, you know, sclerosis, and it's something like a claw pain. And because of uh, insufficiency of uh, blood supply, it also causes ulcers. Because, uh, you know, we have obliterated uh, vascular quality in uh, systemic sclerosis. Excellent joints. Sorry? Excellent joints. Yeah, Excellent mm. joint problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sclerodactyly, they have, you know, tissue sclerosis. They have fibrosis of tissue. So there will be deformity of fingers, you know, because of this sclerosis. And because they have. A, they have deformity and also because they have obliteration in vessels, they will have ulcers because they are really ischemia. Okay? This, this one here, Renault is due to the unavailability of oxygen. This, uh, if? Yeah. Renault Renault. Uh, it is due to hypoxia or something. Because the vessels uh, no, uh, cannot uh, respond to uh, hypoxia well. And first the uh, fingers become pale, and then, for example, after a few minutes, they become red. Because they cannot respond to this, for example, hypoxia well, or, for example, the stress, or uh, anything that causes the constriction. The pathogenesis of uh, systemic sclerosis is due to autoimmunity, vascular damage, and collagen deposition. Uh, about the autoimmunity, we have uh, some CD4 positive cells which, uh, you know, in rabbits is said that they respond to a yet under, uh, unidentified antigen. So the environment of trigger has not been known yet. Okay? Anyway, we have CD4 positive T cells that accumulate in the skin and they release cytokines. And which cytokine? 13. 13. Which do what? Again, the of collagen and extracellular matrix proteins in fibroblasts. So we have two of the two cells, okay, and production of some cytokines that are fibrogenic. Okay. <coughs> we also have vascular damage, and the cause of vascular damage is unknown. But because of endothelial injury, we have played aggregation and we have, uh, you know, uh, release of TDG, uh, TDGF or TGFSO and they cause, for example, endothelial proliferation, fibrosis again. So that is why we have insufficiency of blood supply, okay, because of changes in vessels. And, uh, as I said, we have a uh, narrowing of the vasculature and uh, uh, these changes may occur in pulmonary vasculature as well. So we will have pulmonary hypertension, which is a serious complication of systemic sclerosis. So we have autoimmunity, okay? Which cells were involved? And they secreted have vascular damage, and we have intimal fibrosis, narrowing of vessels, which uh, is seen in different parts of the body, including in lungs. Okay? But we do not know the environmental trigger, and we do not know the cause of vascular injury. And uh, we have fibrosis. We have fibrosis because of accumulation of alternatively activated macrophages. What were these kinds of macrophages? Alternative pathways. We had, we had 
M1 macrophages, M2 macrophages, M2 were alternative pathways, which were important in healing in fibrosis. Yeah? And uh, we have uh, uh, these kinds of macrophages, we have fibrogenic cytokines as you said, and we have hyper responsiveness of fibroblasts to these cytokines. So not only cytokines are produced, but also fibroblasts are uh, sensitive, more sensitive to these cytokines. So we have fibrosis. Then uh, there is no any modern of gene in this disease. There is no any modern of gene in this disease. Gene. Yeah, you have susceptibility genes and also immunity. But you know the um, the association in some autoimmune diseases is well known, but in some not. Oh, it is uh, like CD4 cells. And some uh, unknown antigen caused the release of some cytokines, which is causing the disease. Yes. So where is the moment of the gene? The gene, uh, you know, uh, the, for example, in, for example, SAD, HLAD, or 2 br 3 are known. But uh, in this uh, disease, the exact HLA is not known. But maybe you can find, research, you can find genes, I don't know. But I know that because of uh, autoimmunity, uh, there is some, uh, you know, uh, susceptibility genes like other uh, autoimmune diseases. And we have genes, we have environmental factors which do not know what they are. And uh, so this is the model of pathogenesis. What do we see here? Everybody, what is the external stimulus? We do not know. And uh, anyway, we have endothelial injury and uh, we have uh, obliterative vasculopathy. So we may have pulmonary artery hypertension. And we have ischemia and, you know, in repair we have and also we have genetics, yeah, and we have some external stimuli which we do not know what they are. Anyway, we have T and B cell activation, we have autoantibodies, and we have production of probiotic cytokines such as PGFSR, developing 13, and PGFSR. The result of all of these is synthesis of extracellular matrix within the fibrosis. So we have fibrosis everywhere, including in skin. Okay? Uh, this is the normal skin. What are the differences between these two? Here you see epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. Yeah? In this picture, you see that you know, there is this thick, yeah? and you see that the collagen bundles are thick. You know, here you see collagen bundles which are a bit thinner, and here you see thick collagen bundles. Here is the inflammatory infiltration around the cells. Okay? And as you see here, the equine glands of skin, you know, here you see adipose tissue around equine glands, but here you see that they are displaced, yeah, people. What do you see here? Yeah, and the ulcers. Yeah, I said that the ulcers are deeply ischemia. Ischemia, yeah. And uh, you know the fibrosis can occur in uh, other parts of the body as well. Okay. For example, in alimentary tract, uh, such as esophagus. Uh, you could just put a picture here. This is esophagus, yeah. For example, this fibrosis causes uh, difficulty in uh, you know, swelling and it may cause reflux and 
other things related to you know fibrosis of uh, esophagus. Also in lungs, you have uh, pulmonary hypertension or interstitial fibrosis. Uh, uh, about uh, the epidemiology and clinical features, it is more common in female. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the peak incidence is in the 50 to 60 year age group and uh, about the other things. These are the clinical symptoms, okay? You should learn them, but they are not, uh, you know, you will learn them in the future. The, the most important things you should know are the pathogenesis and, uh, you know, the laboratory evaluation of the diseases. Except studies in which clinical symptoms are also important. Okay. What? Uh, what kind of antibody do you have in this system of sclerosis? Yeah, yeah. We said in, yeah, we have anti-nuclear antibodies. Which anti-nuclear antibodies? Yeah, and anti-centromer. Anti-centromer is mostly seen in press syndrome and anti-DNA is one or anti cs 70 is uh, associated with pulmonary fibrosis and vascular disease. So in cases in which pulmonary fibrosis is seen, we have anti sps 70 and anti centromer is seen in press syndrome. This is important. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a few cases which uh, we will discuss later because we don't have much time. What is mixed connective tissue disease? Mixed connective tissue disease. You know that we call uh, these autoimmune diseases connective tissue disease yeah, because they mostly uh, <coughs> connect vessels. Yeah. 
That is why we call it MHC, Major Fiscal Compatibility Conference. It's a dialogue that was supposed to be done for each other. Yeah, you have a question. And ABO incompatibility. Yeah, ABO incompatibility is, but you know, it is very great because the change the blood groups and HLA So, sometimes uh, our body uh, detects uh, antigens of uh, the organ, or transplant the organ, and uh, acts against it. And sometimes the transplanted tissue acts against us. What is that? GDHD, graft versus cross disease. Yeah. So, that may also occur for example, in pathology you know, and cell transplantation in patients who are immune uh, compromised. And uh, so we want to talk about the rejection of transplants. Okay. That's why we do the uh, immunosuppressive drug before the transplant. Okay. Uh, yes. All of them take immunosuppressive drug. And that, uh, that you have its complications. For example, uh, that you have uh, complications such as cancer infection. So, uh, as you said, uh, the major antigen differences between Dana and the sickness uh, is differences in HLA allergy. Uh, we call all uh, grafts which are exchanged between individuals of the same species allografts. Okay, so we say, so when we say allograft, we mean that the you know individuals of uh, the same species. And uh, uh, after transplantation, our T cells recognize the Dana antigens. Uh, or, for example, uh, 
I have had a pregnancy, and for example, uh, or, or for example, uh, fetus. Yeah, for example, pregnancy, or you know, other things that uh, you know, on our cells there are different antigens. Yes, uh, other than blood group antigens, we also have other antigens. And if we take, for example, organ transplantation, blood transfusion, or pregnancy, we will uh, produce antibodies against those antigens. Okay? And the antibodies are formed in our body. They are present. Okay? After I receive a, an organ transplant, maybe that organ has antigens that uh, I have antibodies against them. Okay? And I will react against them. Uh, this occurs soon after the graphic implant uh, in back. Uh, morphologically, uh, you know, uh, the, for example, if it is a kidney, the graph is a kidney, it rapidly becomes cytotic muscle or anemic. Okay? And uh, there will be fibrinoid necrosis, there will, uh, there will be occlusion of the lumen of uh, And here we have, for example, a capillary uh, Here, for example, this is the transplanted kidney. Okay? There is this antigen on the endothelial cell of this transplanted kidney. I have performed antibody against this antigen in my body. So, this antibody attached to this antigen. And there will be functional mm -hmm. activation and inflammation from both of and other things. So, I will have occlusion of this vessel and the organ will be necrotic. Okay? This is called hyperactive rejection and it is common
cells of trans transplanted transplanted yeah. and they have these on against speech they have the a positive t cells they directly kill the parenchyma cell and we also may have the positive t cells which for example uh, produce cytokine cause inflammation and they cause parenchyma cell damage these are also the antibodies Antibodies. No, here we don't have antibodies. No. And they are not pre formed. And uh, you know, in humoral form also, they are not pre no. They will be formed after uh, transplantation. You know, the uh, antigen presenting cells will take the uh, antigen and uh, present it, and after that, they have the antibodies. Uh, this occurs because of the, the challenges we Maybe, yeah. Uh, but uh, yes, one consistent. You know, because you can't uh, completely match the HLA, uh, except uh, they are on identical twins. But it's very difficult to find two people who are actually matched. So, uh, in, in all uh, graphs, there will be some match. Uh, so, as I said, Cellular rejection uh, is T cell mediated. It may uh, affect tubular interstitial tissue, it may affect the muscular <laughs> tissue, and in muscular <coughs> tissue it may cause inflammation or necrosis. Okay? Uh, what do we see in this picture? Can you tell me what you see in this picture? These are the two. Yeah. And I said that uh, the uh, you know, uh, rejection may be to the interstitia. We have, if you see, these are the epithelial cells of the two. Here we have lymphocytes. You see, these are smaller and denser. These are lymphocytes. Okay? And you have lymphocyte infiltration here in interstitia. Okay, and what is this? This is a vessel. Okay. And you also have lymphocyte infiltration in the vessel's wall. Okay. So this is a kind of cellular rejection at root form, which affects to the interstitial tissue or the vessel. Okay. And uh, why is it important to us? For example, whether it is cellular rejection, humoral rejection. Because, uh, you know, the approach is different. For example, in Robbins it is said that cellular rejection uh, in the absence of humoral rejection, the patients respond well to immunosuppressive therapy. So, uh, you know, uh, they, uh, it is very important to know that whether it is cellular rejection or antibody may be a humoral rejection. Uh, you know that um, treatment is different, the prognosis is different. Okay. Uh, and I said that we also have active antibody mediated rejection which uh, affects which part? Vessels. It mostly affects as, as you see in this picture. You have antibody complement activation and endothelial like Okay. For example, in this picture, oh, we use, uh, you know, we use uh, some IOC markers to confirm humoral rejection. Okay. For example, C40 which is a complement uh, factor. We use it to confirm the presence of homology. It is the IOC, as you see here. And we have chronic rejection. Chronic rejection is mostly seen in um, transplants, and it may uh, occur over months, years, and uh, most of the time, there will be interstitial crisis with narrowing of blood vessels or arterial sclerosis, and it may be due to cells or other antibodies. For example, what we see in this picture, you see 